ready for a deep dive. We're jumping into the world of UAPs. UAPs. Yeah. Okay. Unidentified aerial phenomena. Right. We're looking at them through someone with a totally fresh take on things. Okay. We've got this interview with Sarah. Yeah. She was an imagery analyst for the UAP task force. Wow. But here's the thing. What's that? She's also a psychic medium. Whoa, seriously? <laughs> That's like crossing the streams, isn't it? You've got classified intelligence on one side and psychic experiences on the other. Exactly. You don't meet an astrophysicist every day who analyzes top secret UAP footage and Dee talks to spirits. Spirits in quotes. Yeah, she uses that term. Interesting. That's what makes this deep dive so interesting. For sure. We're going to break down her time on the task force, her own personal encounters, and how she connects it all. Okay. Consciousness, spirituality, the whole shebang. I mean, I'm... what did she actually see that made her so sure we're not alone? So Sarah's clear about something unidentified doesn't automatically equal alien. Right, of course. She was on the task force from 2019 to 2020. Okay. Analyzing images, trying to figure out if there was really something unexplained there. Did she find anything that fit the bill? Oh, yes, yeah, she did. Really? She talks about this UAP footage she analyzed, still classified. Hmm. It wasn't just one video or picture. Okay. It was like this gradual buildup over time that convinced her about non-human intelligence being out there. Okay, now you have to tell me what kind of evidence are we talking about? What could possibly be so convincing? So she describes this one video. Mm. Big metallic object, shaped like a disc, just hanging out near a military aircraft. No way. And get this, it just stayed put. Really? Even with all this wind shear that should have moved it, you know, according to physics and all. So we're not talking about some blurry dot here. She had clear visual. Oh, yeah. Crystal clear. Wow. And she's all about ruling out the usual suspects, like parallax. Parallax. You know how when you're looking at a car window, things closer seem to move faster? Right. Even if they're going the same speed. Exactly. Okay. Sarah's analysis ruled that out in this case. Interesting. So you're left with this object that basically breaks our understanding of physics. That's wild. That, plus other classified sightings she worked on. That's what solidified it for her. I bet a lot of our listeners are thinking what I'm thinking right now. If it's that convincing, why haven't we seen it? Sarah gets that. Yeah. She says, of course, you got to protect your sources and methods. It's true. But she's also frustrated with the Pentagon, you know. How so? They keep denying everything outright, saying UAPs don't exist. When she knows firsthand, it's way more complicated than that. That's got to be frustrating, knowing what you know, but not being able to say anything. Totally. It's like this pattern we keep seeing yeah. the official story versus what people like Sarah, who've been in the system, actually experienced. Exactly. It gets even trickier when you add in her work as a medium. Right. Not your average UAP task force member, is she? Not at all. What does that even mean in her world? Communicating with spirit. So for Sarah, spirit means like a consciousness. Okay. But it's beyond the physical realm. Okay. These are beings that aren't stuck in bodies like we are. Interesting. She started sensing and talking to them as a kid. Really? It got stronger after this near-death experience she had in 2012. Wow. So she's been at this for a while. Yeah, quite a while. It makes you think about that link between UAPs and consciousness that people are always talking about. Right. Like, which came first? It's a real head-scratcher. Hold on. Before we go too far down that road, we got to talk about this blue being in her bedroom. Oh, yeah. That's a wild one. Seven feet tall. Can you imagine? I can't even. It's not your average Tuesday. Not at all. Did she say anything else about it? Or was it just a quick thing? Oh, no. She went into detail. Like what? She said, smooth, blue skin, no hair at all. Okay. But it had these ridges on its head. Ridges? Yeah. And get this. It was wearing some kind of uniform. A uniform? Seriously? Like something out of Star Trek, she said. Oh, and it had a crystalline sword. A sword. Like a real sword. Crystal clear, she said. Wow, that's intense. Was she scared? Not even a little bit. She said she felt peaceful. Really? Even protected, which is wild. Yeah, right, right. It's like the opposite of those scary alien abduction stories. Exactly. Maybe there's more to these encounters than we think. Right. Like a whole spectrum of possibilities. Okay. Before we get into all that. Yeah. You said earlier that Sarah connects her mediumship to the whole UAP thing. I did. What did you mean by that? 
So she says her communication with spirit is mainly telepathic. Telepathic, huh? Yeah, and she finds that interesting because uh, you hear about telepathy in some UAP encounters too. Oh, I see what you mean. Like there's this thread of consciousness running through both. That's pretty out there. It is. So it's not just about stuff flying around for her. No, it's uh, like different kinds of consciousness messing with ours. Exactly. Wild. Right, and it makes you wonder... Which came first, you know? Like, did we become aware of them, or did our minds change to see them? That's the million-dollar question. No kidding. It'll really twist your brain up. Speaking of which, yeah. back to that blue being for a sec. Okay. This wasn't just in her head. Right. She said her cat was there, too. Oh, yeah. What happened? The cat didn't even care. No way. No hissing, no freaking out, nothing. That's really strange. Right. She said her cat's usually really good at sensing bad vibes. Huh. So it's like the cat knew something we don't... Maybe. This encounter and her whole medium thing, it got her thinking... About... That there's more types of non-human intelligence than we realize. Like what? She talks about meeting Draconians and Aryans. Draconians and Aryans. Yeah. That sounds like a sci-fi movie. I know, right? Like lizard people and super advanced aliens. Pretty much. We can't really say if they're real or not. Sure. But it's weird how those ideas keep popping up. Tell me about it. Across different cultures, throughout history. It does make you think. Like maybe those stories are tapping into something real. Something deeper about the universe and everything in it. Exactly. And that's what's so interesting about Sarah. What do you mean? She's not afraid to talk about this stuff. It's true. She's really putting herself out there. Especially with her background, working at the Pentagon. Yeah, can you imagine the look she must gotten? I bet it took a lot of guts to say something. For sure. Makes you wonder what her co-workers thought. Right. Especially the skeptical ones. Did she say anything about that? Actually, she was surprised. Yeah. How open-minded a lot of them were. Really? She thought they'd shut her down, but they were curious. Huh. Even at the Pentagon, people are starting to wonder. It seems like it. It's kind of humbling, you know? What is? To think that even the people in charge don't have all the answers. I know what you mean. It makes you realize. Right. Maybe knowledge isn't about who's got the most power. Right. It's like who's asking the right questions. Exactly. Which brings us to something we haven't touched on yet. What's that? Disclosure. The big reveal. Yep. When it all comes out. Does Sarah think that's going to happen? She does, mm. but she doesn't think it'll be the government making announcements. Really? Why not? She thinks non-human intelligence will take the reins. So they'll just reveal themselves. On their own terms, when they're ready, she says. Huh. Interesting. But if that's true, why all the secrecy from governments? Why not just tell everyone? She has a theory about that. Okay, I'm listening. She thinks maybe at first they just didn't know what to do. It's a lot to process. Right. And then it spiraled into this whole cover-up. Makes sense. Like trying to hold a mountain of dirt together when the truth keeps pushing through. Whoa, that's a powerful image. It makes you think about all the stuff that's probably buried under there. Knowledge we could use to understand ourselves, the universe, everything. Exactly, and that's just it. It's like we're stuck in this loop of wanting to control things. Totally. But the universe is all about, like, expanding and connecting. Right. Doesn't really add up. Not really. It's like we're trying to explain something brand new. Yeah. Using the same old stuff that made it a mystery to begin with. It's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Exactly. Maybe we need to, like, stretch our own minds. To really get it. To even begin to get it. It takes a certain kind of person to live with that. To really embrace the unknown. And that's what's so wild about Sarah. What do you mean? She's got this normal life. Working at the Pentagon, no less. Right. But she's also got these incredible abilities. And she's not shying away from them. Not one bit. She's not hiding in some basement. She's out there living her life. It challenges everything we think we know. It really does. About what's possible, you know? Totally. It's like she's saying, hey, you can be a scientist and talk to spirits. And nobody can tell you otherwise. Exactly. It makes you realize we put limits on ourselves. Big thing. And on what the universe can be. We think we've got it all figured out. When really we're just scratching the surface. Maybe what we think is real is just a tiny part of something way bigger. A reality where consciousness is key. It's a mind-blowing thought. You know, there's one more thing about Sarah I wanted to touch on. What's that? She talks about how her spiritual side, all these encounters, they didn't mess with her faith. Interesting. She's Christian, by the way. Okay. And she says it actually made her faith stronger. Huh. You don't hear that every day. Right. It's like she found a way to bring those two worlds together. The spiritual and the religious. 
Like, maybe they're not so different after all. Maybe it's all part of the same search. For something bigger than ourselves. For meaning. For oh, understanding. No, for it's a lot to unpack. It really is. So where do we go from here? What do we do with all this? Honestly, I think the biggest thing is to just stay curious. Curious? Yeah, keep asking questions, even the weird ones. Don't be afraid to go there. Exactly. Be open to the possibility that the answers might surprise us. That the universe might be wilder than we can imagine. Way wilder. I like the sound of that. Me too. Well, that's about all the time we have for today's deep dive. Time flies when you're exploring the unknown. It really does. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And until next time, keep looking up and keep those minds open. And, and so, Carl, here's, here's the million-dollar question. Do you believe that a higher form of non-human intelligence has visited this planet? Right. So non-human intelligence exists. Non-human intelligence has been interacting with humanity. This interaction is not new, and it's been ongoing. And there are unelected people in the government that are aware of that. Thank you.